Good morning, everyone. We gather here today to dedicate the Bentown Police Kennel to one of our fallen officers, James Armstrong. To start, I would like to thank the Armstrong family who's sitting here in the front today for being here with us today and for showing up every year uh, to celebrate and to remember uh, Jim's life and the sacrifice that he made for this township. I would also like to thank all our current Bentown Police officers who are here and our retired officers who came out today to support this effort. This project has been in the works for many years. In fact, I was over here last week with Tony Ryle, and he said when he was a canine handler, they were fighting to get this kennel built. So we're going back about 40 years. So we're very proud that this has come to fruition. I would like to thank and acknowledge Mayor Joe DiGiralamo, who's with us here today, our Township Council who is here, and our Township Administration. Without all of their support and approval, this building would never have been built. Politicians in California, some you have seen on the news, are trying to shut canine units down in this country. It makes zero sense to any of us, but having this type of political support from our elected officials and seeing this building erected gives all of these handlers here great reassurance that they can go out and do their job. I'd like to thank our command staff who's here with me today, specifically Lieutenant Bob Bush, Lieutenant James McGinty, and Lieutenant Mike Shum. I'd also like to acknowledge our sheriff, former director, Fred Harron, and our former deputy director, Pat Ponticelli, the members of Public Works, Director Tim Schultz, our maintenance team, for all their efforts to get this building up, erect it, and to keep it well maintained. Officer Armstrong was an early member of the Ben Sam Canine Unit when he served with his partner, Shep. 48 years ago, this past Saturday, on April 15, 1975, Officer Armstrong was shot and killed as he investigated an armed robbery. His partner Shep was also shot that day, but he survived. Our department will never, ever forget Jim's sacrifice, and we've used this tragedy to help keep our officers safe on the street today. And as you'll see in the demonstration, the technology has also helped to hopefully prevent a tragedy like this from ever happening again. In addition to the building being dedicated to Officer Armstrong, we have named the spare canine run in his partner's name, Shep. We felt that was an appropriate spot to remember the service of his canine. Since Officer Armstrong's tragic death, the canine unit has continued to serve his community with distinction, with over 50 police service dogs over the years. Our current unit is comprised of six working dogs commanded by Lieutenant Mike Shum. They're here to my right, and they're also here with one of Philadelphia's finest on the end. Some of the work they've done over the past four years, I'd like to share with you. Over 200 criminal searches, resulting in 60 apprehensions. Of that, zero bites. I want to say that again, zero bites. That's a direct reflection of the training these officers have. 30 firearms recovered, 300 narcotic searches, resulting in thousands of pounds of illegal drugs taken off the street. Canine success depends on a significant amount of training and dedication. The K-9 unit would now like to specifically acknowledge Mr. Robert Swan, who is here today, sitting next to the family. Bob is now retired, but has played a significant role in professionalizing Ben Siam K-9 and putting us on the map. For his years of leadership and training skills, we have named the training room, which is inside the kennel, in Bob's honor. Thank you for your service to Ben Siam, Bob. I'd also like to acknowledge Philadelphia Police for their partnership and their training and their commitment to Ben Sound, allowing to train our current canine handlers and they continue to train us on a daily basis. At this time, I'll call Mayor Joe DiGiraldo up for co comments and then we'll have the family come up with our retired canine handlers to cut the ribbon. Mayor. Thank you, Director. Good morning, all right. Carol, thank you and Armstrong family for being here today and Bob, thank you for all your services and uh, to my right, you see the real uh, stars of our department here, uh, our K-9, who I watched quite a few mornings practicing. Uh, I can't say enough that this building's being dedicated to uh, Officer Armstrong. You know, I was curious about that day. I remember that day very vividly. And I often wondered what happened to the gentleman that shot him, Mr. Hennessy. I wondered, and I had our police looked it up for me. He is still in prison. 
He went up for parole, I think, in 98. He was shot down. He didn't get parole, thank God. And has never been up for parole again. So, Carol, I don't know what it can bring to you, but let you know that that man is being punished every day that he lasts here on Earth. So we thank you for being with us and with our department you come with all the time. Uh, Mr. Ryle, Officer Ryle, you're always there with us. Uh, you're an old timer, uh, almost as old as me, uh, not quite. Anyway, it, uh, it's a great day for us to dedicate this building here. Uh, when you go in, you'll understand the training these dogs go through to keep us safe in Ben Salem, what these officers do on a daily basis with our canine. And uh, something that the director brought up, something that people don't realize, our dogs have never bit anyone in, the, in their work that they do, which uh, some places are getting rid of their canine. But it won't happen here in Ben Salem, everybody. Ben Salem's gonna stay safe, no nonsense community. Today, enjoy this building. You're gonna go in and see it, it's, it's incredible. Uh, you're gonna see the dogs have very, very well when you see this building inside, how they're being treated. So uh, enjoy this day, the sun's coming out. God bless all of you. And thank God for our Ben Salem Police Department and thank God for Ben Salem and the USA. God bless all of you. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, Lieutenant McGinty uh, is going to escort the family up to cut the ribbon. I would also ask any retired Ben Salem Police canine handler to come up as well and be part of the ceremony. And as you'll see, Jack, the brother of Jimmy, has a patch on his uh, front left jacket that was given to him by his brother approximately 50 years ago. Uh, and it was the patch that he, uh, he wore as a Ben Salem canine handler. So. Hey. Yeah. My name is Lieutenant Mike Shum. I've been a police officer for 17 years with Ben Salem Township Police Department. I've been a canine handler for 16 years. I've worked two dogs. i worked every specialty we had. I worked uh, Argo, who was patrol and narcotics, and I worked Osco, currently work Osco, right now who's explosive detection. What I'm about to show you right now is our canine kennel that we just dedicated to James Armstrong today. So in here, this is our main meeting area. Um, we have a few desks. In a few months, we're gonna have it wired completely to make it a working station, kind of like a, a police substation for our canine handlers. Um, we have two desks we're going to have wired with workstations of computers and then we're going to have this entire facility uh, wired with cameras that we have video access through phones. So meaning if our dogs here on extended stay, say we go away on vacation, we house our dogs here for safety reasons. But one thing we're lacking is the ability to keep an eye on them when we're not present, when we're working the road. Usually the road dog or the road, the road handler, the road uh, supervisor will come in here and take care of our dogs. If we have access to CCTV through our phones, through a program that we're going to install here, we'll be able to keep track on these, uh, these cameras, uh, on these dogs at all time. So what we have here are our newest runs. We, can, we have six total dogs in the unit. Um, we have one spare run, and then we have eight, eight runs total, but we only use six. And each dog has his own de uh, dedicated run. Prior to this kennel being built, our old kennel, they uh, had wire fencing, wire walls, fencing walls, chain linked. We had a lot of problems with our dogs getting hurt, getting impaled if they would jump on the fencing, breaking teeth. This new technology, this glass is temper proof, it won't break. Our dogs can see through it, we, it's easily cleanable and it's unbreakable. And it has all smooth edges. Inside, it's all smooth edges. There's nothing for the dog to get hung up on or cut up on. What we'll do is, Usually we'll feed the dog through a rotating mold, and then we'll call him in if we have to clean the exterior run. He'll come in, we'll feed him, we'll close the run down, and we'll go out and clean the exterior. And then when we clean the exterior, we'll let the dog back out, close here, and clean the interior. Usually this is beneficial if we have an aggressive dog. All of our dogs now in the unit are friendly, but in the past we've had dogs that are a little aggressive to anyone but the handler, so we had to segregate them this way. But now we can usually get dogs out and we'll walk them on our own. So we'll put them in another run or we'll take them out and let them empty and walk and we'll clean the whole run itself like this. So this is where all of our dogs stay. Down here, 
We have a dedicated run that we will never use. It's dedicated to K-9 Shep, who was Officer Armstrong's partner. Um, we dedicated this run today uh, as we dedicated the kennel to Officer Armstrong. Shep was his partner who was shot in 1975 with Arm Officer Armstrong on that traffic stop, but he was not killed. He thankfully lived uh, another two years, but this is his run. What makes this kennel unique is that we have, its, we have a training center, which we never had before, which is critical because we do a lot of our training in-house. We do that for a number of reasons. One, it, uh, it helps us with the cost of things, and two, it helps us modify things as needed as the dog gets older. So if we ever need to pick up different training, we don't have to rely on anyone but ourselves and our unit and our facilities within the township to fix things. So this room here is our training room, and it was dedicated to this man right here, uh, Mr. Robert Swan. We call him Bob Swan. Um, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, he set the standards with Director McVeigh for our unit. He brought in new guidelines according to the USPCA, the United States Police Canine Association, and he raised the bar for our unit. He implemented different training methods and different ways of working our dogs that took us to the next level, that made us the best, that made us better than we ever were. And before, prior to that, we were kind of a lost unit. We were a great unit, but we weren't as good as we could be. And this man was a founding father. He was instrumental in setting the standards for our department and our unit to get us to where we need to be today, which makes us so great. And because of him, we dedicated this training room. It's called the Bob uh, Swan Training Center. And this is where we do the foundational work for all of our dogs for scent imprinting. Whether it be drug or explosive detection, what we do is we have these special boxes. And what we'll have is certain odors dedicated to one particular box. And what we do is with our dogs, we, every dog we get has a high play drive, meaning they like tennis balls or they like, certain, they like to play. So we harness that energy into teaching them how to trick, trick them and how to look for odor. So this, this is what we call a scent box, a scent scratch box. It's ingenious, really. But when we get a dog nine months to a year old, right, what they'll use is their eyes. And that's good to a point, but what we want to use them is we want them to transition from their eyes to their nose. And we do that by using this. Like this. We'll have a guy standing behind there. And what he'll do is we we'll use the dog. The dog will come in, he'll see the ball bouncing around and I'll try to get that ball. We'll lift up the window, and the dog will play tug of war with this ball. And what he's doing at the same time, he's using his eyes to recognize the ball which he wants to play with. But we also have tra a trap door under here where we put the specific odor. As he's playing with this, with us, tug of war, he's inhaling all that odor that we want to imprint him on, teach him to learn. And what we do is we trick him into recognizing this ball, he associates this ball with that odor. So eventually, we'll make the ball disappear and he'll get in the pattern of coming in searching each box systematically when he smells the odor that he associates the tennis ball with he'll stop then the ball magically appears he'll engage and play and that's how we teach him how to do uh, recognize different odors through positive reinforcement it's pretty simple it takes about a week to imprint a dog in multiple odors so this room is very important to us and we didn't have this in our old kennel we didn't have the room we didn't have any 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 resources available to do any training, but now we do most of our training in-house because of this. Like I said, this is a workstation. So many times we do experience when we track bad guys or one of the subjects, we, we tr chase people, we get covered in mud. We do have the facilities available to wash ourselves if we need be. We also have a washer and dryer in here um, to wash our clothes and uniforms. And we have a tub here to wash our dogs. So it's an all-in-one substation that if we had to change our uniforms, if we had to wash our dogs, and if we had to do our reports, we could do it all in one. So I showed you the inside of the kettle, right? How we clean them in the inside. Well, this is how we clean the exterior. And we made upgrades in here for safety reasons for the dogs, okay? So whenever we have a dog housed at the kennel, we have access internally and externally. What we'll do is we'll, we'll come out here, we'll clean the interior first, and each dog has his own run outside as well. What we did is, what we found is back in the day we used to have concrete walls that were hard to clean or we had jagged metal fences like um, 
different types of fencing that the dogs would cut themselves, like I said, in the interior. And here we try to streamline it as, as, as much as possible. And we use corrugated metal without any sharp edges. We put a buffer on the top here to prevent the dog from jumping up and slicing himself because some of these jaws, dogs can jump this high. And what we don't want to do, what we've seen in the past, is they'll jump up and they'll get caught, they'll hang themselves, or they'll slice their paws on their hands. And we try to prevent that. So we try to make this as smooth as possible, but as durable as possible. In the front here, we have a fence, but it's on the exterior of the bar, so usually they don't bite this. It's very easily clean. It's all concrete, and it's sloped down. So we have a hose out here and a squeegee, and what we'll do is we'll clean all the, uh, the dirt and filth that the dogs leave behind into this drain, and periodically what we'll do is we'll take the drain off, and we'll clean it itself out. It's all protected from the weather. We, left a, uh, we try to want a little green to save electricity. Very rarely do we leave these lights on unless we have a dog here, but they, they are, they're manually, we turn them on if, as needed. But we left um, a, like a semi-translucent place to get the top for the roof to let the sunlight in to save uh, energy and to make it easier underneath for us to see. But this outside run, what they'll do is sometimes we can leave the dogs out here to walk free, free as long as we have that exterior gate closed. But um, we usually keep them out inside, locked between two barriers. Um, so if they get out one, they most likely won't get out a second gate so they don't escape. In the old kennel, we did have one dog get out. Um, he actually bent through, the on, the only, the, they only had one layer of fencing, he bent through it, because he was, uh, it was 4th of July, fireworks set him off, he got a little scared, and he got out, and he actually got hit by a car on the Unvold Road and killed. Um, that happened about 10 years ago. So this prevents that. We have two layers of uh, safety, fence one, fence two, and then we will eventually have cameras in here where we can see something if a dog, uh, any kind of hazard of a dog gets out.